Today we are visiting Whiston Castle. In 1093, Rhys ap Tudor, the last king of Dubath, died in the Battle of Brecon, leaving a power vacuum that Henry I, son of William the Conqueror, was quick to exploit. Henry colonised the area with Flemish settlers, one of whom was a baron named Wizzo, who he granted land previously owned by a Welsh lord. Here he built Whiston Castle, the name of which is derived from his own. Over the years and subsequent generations, the castle was often captured by the Welsh and then recaptured by the Wizzos. The castle was demolished and partially rebuilt in the early 13th century, only to be abandoned at the end of the century when Sir John Wogan moved to the more lavish Picton Castle. Whiston Castle is a Mott and Bailey castle. Now the Mott is a mound of earth on which stands a keep, which is the defensive structure, and that would be protected by a palisade fence. Now the Bailey is this green space behind me, and that's where people work, live, play, so you've got your kitchens, your chapels, and that would have also been surrounded by a wooden palisade fence. So the thing about a Mott and Bailey is that the keep is raised above the Bailey, and that means that you're not only protecting yourself from people who are outside your castle, boundaries, but also probably from the people living inside the walls. <laughs> now access from the Mott to the Bailey was sometimes steps or a bridge. This is one of the best preserved Mott and Bailey castles in Wales. It's got all these earthworks, which is quite nice because normally you don't actually get to see very much of the Bailey. You get to see the Mott and sometimes a bit of the castle, but very rarely do you get to see any of the remains of the Bailey part, other than maybe a green field, but very rarely do you get the ditches that you see here. So here, within your bailey, you have your mot, and around your mot you have a ditch. I'm going to guess that this was at one point a moat. Stick water in it and it makes a much better defence. And that's the thing. Your mot, with its keep on the top of the thing, is your defensible bit. So if the bit out here falls for any reason, or if anybody's able to infiltrate by pretending to be uh, merchants or tradespeople or, you know, Aunt Agnes's second cousin, third removed, they can pop in there, they can get their weapons out and, you know, slaughter the people in there, but the important people, basically the rich people, they can be up in here and all they need to do is close the gates, batten down the hatches as they say, and they're safe inside. It's not necessarily ideal for the people on the outside, but for the people on the inside, it's, it's a pretty good deal, isn't it, really? But then that is what money buys you, you see. Now, of course, the other advantage of being up high is that it's great for defence, not only because of the fact that people coming up then have to do that in order to attack you, or that, but also, you can see them coming from quite a long way off. All you need is a few people with some really good eyesight standing at the top and looking out. In fact, they'd have been standing much higher. And then, hey presto, there's no surprise when the hordes come over the hillside. In fact, not only that, but you can also keep an eye on the people in the bailey and make sure they're not doing anything you don't want them to. Yeah. Now this stone keep is a replacement for the original wooden one, which I should imagine they probably thought, well, wood's all well and good, but stone, ho oh, ho ho. So they upgraded. They built this thing out of stone and originally it was twice as high as it is now and it had a parapet round the top that allowed you to have a better look and probably, you know, position some arches, that sort of thing. Unfortunately, it's been excavated and there isn't much indication of what the ground floor was used for. So, we can only assume servants downstairs, rich people upstairs, maybe it was rich people on both levels, who knows. But either way, it is a fantastic example of one of these things, and there's quite a lot left of it really, which I should imagine the rest of it can be found in houses in the village. You know, playing a supporting role.
Baileys were usually kidney shaped and that's because the mott and keep were at one end and the bailey sort of went in a half moon shape around the castle which meant that you had this lump in the middle of the inside where the mott went round. And this is a good example of what that would have looked like. So what maketh you of Whiston Castle? This is one of the best, actually this is the best mott and bailey castle that we've been to I think. Probably, in the fact that you've got both the bailey and the mott yeah. and part of the tower. I mean, it, it, it doesn't beat... It doesn't beat Brontlis by any stretch. No. But as an example of everything being here... Yes, Brontlis really did miss out on the fact that it didn't have a bailey anymore, did it? No, I know. that, that the was tower, the, the, the tower was fantastic. The mm. mott was really good, the tower was really good, but the bailey was missing. And the fact that this has got both that you can still see. Yeah. I mean, it does not... A busting great deal here but you get a really good idea it, of, it gives of you the an layout. idea of the scale yeah. doesn't it because yeah. I, I you kind of forget that these things have to be quite large and if yeah. it's not there you're not gonna know i have to admit the bailey is smaller than i expected because people were working and living in that in that thing well, that's quite a lot of room though that's yeah, probably over an acre i would have thought you'd probably be quite on top of each other there but i think they were smaller back then as well weren't they? yes people people were smaller <laughs> they lived in we, you know we we've grown accustomed to the ridiculous amount of room that we have in, in places and I suppose people but, were, were yeah. more frugal back then. And of course the I other thing is how many people actually lived there and how many people lived further afield because you can only have a, a yeah. certain number of people living close to, otherwise everybody has to commute to go and do things like farming. I think people probably came here to trade, yeah. I think there were a certain number of people who lived here. Yeah, certain trades it probably would be advantageous to stay on site. Yeah, but others probably not so much. Yeah. It was probably a fairly itinerant population that lived here, other than the soldiers and the lords and ladies and all that sort of thing. Mr. Wizzo probably hung about on site. Oh, uh, that name gets me every time. I know. I mean, we don't actually know how it's supposed to be pronounced, but we go for Wizzo because it, it sounds like well, a wizard. <laughs> but even if it was Wizo, that's not. Or Vizzo. It could have been a, a uh, V. Yeah, Viz. viz I'm sure that Z. somebody will let us know in the comments down below and, yeah. and we would love to know how it's supposed to be said and uh, yeah we should have looked it up before we got here but no we're not those kind of people <laughs> we shall see you next time TTFN Wizzo <laughs> I was going to wish her <laughs>